Good morning. It's 8 o'clock, so we will call to order the spatial meeting of the Salina City Commission. I would start by asking staff uh, for confirmation that the Kansas Open Meeting Act required notice has been properly provided. Yes. Thank you. With that, we will move into the roll call. Mayor Hoppick. Here. Commissioner Davis. Here. Commissioner Franz. Here. Commissioner Hodges. Here. Commissioner Ryan. Okay. Would those who are please able stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, with that, we will move into item 3.1. Item 3.1, resolution number 20-7836, certifying the legal authority and authorization to apply for the Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding Grant from the United States Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs. Okay, before we do that, <laughs> Thank I you, Mayor. should have done that. We need to first do our... our uh, Thing, explain to how everything's <laughs> going to work since we're doing teleconference. So yeah, go ahead, Thank Mike. you, Mayor. As a little bit of explanation, I've had some questions and it thought it might be helpful. This, all these preliminaries that we do each week are at the uh, advice of the Attorney General and Legal Counsel on how to conduct our meetings in an open, uh, meet the Kansas Open Meetings Act in light of the way that we're uh, doing them by phone, including uh, the, uh, the explanation of executive session every meeting, whether we intend to have executive session or not. So. Seems a little bit uh, laborious, but uh, it is uh, the legal advice that, that came out of the Attorney General's office. So, as many of you know, we uh, uh, have a mass gathering limitation, and so we are using a conference bridge approach where people can call in on the phone uh, to address you in citizens forum and in public comment. And then we also are broadcasting over uh, Salina Media Connection, over their cable channel and their online channel, as well as uh, the city is putting out a YouTube live feed. And so one of the first things we do is just confirm that all of that is, is up and running technologically. We have a staff person that's, that's monitoring all that. So, Scott, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And can you confirm that uh, the Salina Media Connection feed is active? Yes, it is. And their online feed? Yes. And the city's YouTube feed? Yes, sir. Okay, so all of our technology is working. Uh, for anyone listening at home, uh, the way that they're able to participate in public comment and, and citizens forum in this format is to call into the conference call, and that is a software and a calling uh, technology that, that I monitor. I can see that they're, they've called in, and they'll have an opportunity to indicate that they wish to speak. So the number that they need to call is 785-621-0800. Uh, they'll be asked for a participant ID number, and that number is 782956. They will also be prompted to announce themselves as if they're going to be announced as they enter the conference call. That functionality is turned off, but they will be prompted to announce themselves. They, they can either do that or choose not to, but in either, either case, they do need to press pound to complete that, that function, and then they'll be added to the call. So uh, with respect to executive session, we don't anticipate one today, but if we were to conduct an executive session, the governing body would continue to meet in this room due to size limitations and social distancing limitations. So the conference call, the Salina Media Connection uh, feed, both uh, on cable TV and online, and the YouTube live feed would all be uh, paused or muted. The conference call would stay live, so anyone that was on the call could stay on at, while the governing body was in executive session. At the point that you come back out of executive session, we would uh, unmute all those technologies, so the conference call would be unmuted again, uh, as well as Salina Media Connection and YouTube live. So as one last reminder, if anyone wishes to uh, participate by calling in, that number is 785-621-0800, and they'll be prompted for a participant ID number, and that is 782-956. 
And then if I can, I'll and take the opportunity to apologize for the need for the impromptu need for this special uh, meeting. I appreciate your willingness to meet. Uh, it involves uh, application for a grant and staff uh, became aware that the uh, submission requirements of the grant included an affirmation that all applicable governing body uh, authorizations were in place. And as we looked at that, uh, it was pretty emphatic <laughs> in the way that it was worded. It just felt like it was necessary for you to authorize the application before it was submitted. So with that, I'll turn it over to Brad Anderson. He's uh, in, in these uh, altered times in terms of staffing and roles. Brad's taken on the role of, of uh, shepherding grant applications and monitoring grant opportunities. So he's uh, been staffing through this Department of Justice grant uh, as it relates to coronavirus emergency supplemental funding. So I'll turn it over to him. Um, thank you, Mike, and uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, for this opportunity um, that I think will be a benefit to the city. Um, it, as you um, are well aware, uh, with the uh, onset of the coronavirus, uh, multiple resources have been made available through state and federal uh, channels, uh, offering funding uh, through existing or new programs. Um, this particular program, uh, the uh, emergency emergency supplemental funding uh, was available both through state and uh, the Fed, uh, the state requirement to go to uh, city manager's point, the state requirement didn't authorize the, or didn't expect the governing body approval. And when I got the federal copy open uh, and, and was working on that application on Tuesday during your meeting uh, uh, is when I saw that language and we just weren't able able to notify you in time. So that is my fault for uh, not not being further ahead in this and, and uh, getting far enough down on the grant application uh, to, to see that it was one of the final stipulations at the end of the, uh, uh, the end of the application process. So with that being said, um, what has been made uh, available through the Office of Justice Programs and the Department of Justice uh, is uh, a predetermined amount of uh, uh, $62,384 uh, to be used for uh, law enforcement or law enforcement related in EMS, police, and fire uh, uh, applications. Uh, this isn't a, um, uh, this uh, particular amount of money is uh, uh, it, it, there, there's an amount that was made available also to the county, a slightly lower amount. Um, they were successful in, in their grant application and, and have that, uh, have that uh, money designated and uh, the time is running out uh, to be able to qualify for and, and uh, apply for this. What um, this fund is, is, will do uh, for benefit of the city are two things. One, um, the fire department has produced with uh, the police department's help uh, a, a fairly significant list of personal protective equipment and, and devices and also some, uh, um, some replacement bags. The fire department's currently using a canvas-based bag uh, for equipment. Uh, they have one of those in each of their vehicles and their uh, proposed to switch those from canvas to uh, a, another material that's easier to clean and disinfect. The canvas, as you might imagine, is hard to uh, disinfect uh, it effectively. And, and so um, what uh, was prepared for this uh, are two uh, uh, approximate cost projections. Um, the uh, one involving personnel and one involving equipment and supplies. Uh, I, I think it's worth a moment uh, to talk about personnel uh, with the, the details that you've heard about personnel and limited staffing and reassignment. Um, as the police department was open uh, uh, throughout uh, this time, uh, they had to take some special measures, uh, especially the first two months. They had uh, uh, three different personnel, 24-7, uh, uh, staggered, but, uh, but a, a person at, at each shift. At, an entryway monitoring temperatures and going through questions and so on of people entering uh, the building and uh, uh, and so we got estimates from that two months and were able to be able to project out what the impact of that would be if another incident similar occurred between now and the granting period ending as, as late as uh, May of uh, 2021. 
Uh, we also were able to gather information from the Building Services Department through Parks and Rec, uh, but the, the uh, uh, custodians and maintenance workers who are helping take care of disinfecting, cleaning, uh, and, and sanitizing uh, the police department, the, the restrooms, the common touch surfaces, and so on with the, uh, um, the aerosolized uh, uh, disinfectant that they're using and, and some other uh, uh, efforts to, to mitigate uh, any transfer. Of, of the virus. That all adds up. And, and so uh, uh, we uh, utilized on the, on the personnel side, uh, you'll see that between now and, and what, uh, for the granting purposes, there was no sense going uh, and projecting this all the way out to uh, uh, May of 2021 when uh, we're showing a, a minimum of about $84,000 or $86,000 worth of expenses between uh, now and the end of the year. So uh, we simply took the number of weeks, uh, 31 weeks, and the uh, projected rate of the, of the current uh, time that building uh, uh, services folks are spending with the police department to, to come up with that, uh, uh, with that projection. From a commission standpoint, or, or the, the, the bottom line benefit of this is that um, there will be uh, deferred expenditures with a successful award of the grant. It will allow uh, approximately $20,000 worth of PPE between now and the, the end of the grant period to be purchased and, and to be able to utilize uh, the consumption of those, uh, especially with EMS and, and uh, uh, you know every ambulance run requiring uh, additional steps and protocols than um, they had even done before, uh, and with the uh, uh, police protocols as well, uh, th th its equipment and, and supplies that uh, will be valued. Um, that uh, prevents us from having to spend that out of the city's general fund uh, or the other budgeted funds for the department, and, and the limited resources that they have can be allocated uh, for other needs. The same goes with personnel. Uh, you know that will be a department head and a city manager decision in terms of the breakdown and allocation of those exact amounts, uh, and and how that reimbursement is made. But uh, the substantial difference is is that uh, with the successful awarding of this, we'll have a little over forty thousand dollars to be able to uh, uh, reimburse uh, the city's general fund for uh, the uh, direct costs of of the time that employees are spending with disinfecting and, and cleaning um, our, uh, our uh, law enforcement facility. There's quite a bit uh, more detail within here in terms of the grant narrative. Some of that uh, I did not go over with you because uh, part of that has been uh, borrowed from a previous press release that the city manager had approved and, and that went out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it asked for a context of why this need exists. I don't think it's a high bar to get over uh, as far as the grant application, but a necessary step. Uh, and it provides a little bit additional narrative with the uh, uh, police and fire uh, uh, efforts and, and declared needs as well. Um. I know that uh, uh, Chief Hill and Chief Royce, or Chief, Chief Hill, <laughs> Chief Nelson and Chief Royce uh, are on the line and available if you have a detailed question about their departments or operations that I can't answer. Uh, and uh, I think I will uh, stop there and uh, stand for questions. Okay, do we have any questions for Mr. Anderson? No. Nope. It's pretty straightforward, so. Do we need to see if there's any anyone in the line that wants to make we, any we comments? We can ask for public comment. I recognize all the uh, phone numbers as being support staff, but uh, we'll make one additional request. If anybody wishes to address the city commission, please press star nine. Don't have any callers. Okay. With that, I will bring it back to the commission for action. Mayor Hoppett, Commissioner Hodges here. I move that we approve resolution number 20-7836, authorizing the city of Salina to apply for the CESF grant. Commissioner second. David, second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 20-7836 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 4-0. And that is all we have on our agenda for this special meeting. So with that, I will accept a motion for adjournment. Commissioner, Go ahead. Commissioner Davis moved to adjourn. Commissioner Hodges, second. Mayor Hoppick here. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much, everyone.